Okay, right now we're going to work on dividing integers. Uh, the model I'm going to use for this, I kind of want to show you. So we're going to start with all positive numbers first. And we want to do 12 divided by 3. And there's a little bit of disagreement as to, does this mean I'm taking 12 and I'm dividing them into groups of 3? And how many groups do I have? Or is this 12? I'm trying to divide it into three even groups. And how many are in each group? Up to this point, when you were just dealing with positive numbers, it really didn't matter which method you used. You could use either one, and it worked. But when we deal with integers with negative numbers, it does matter. So we're going to use the idea that this is how many counters I have. We have 12 positives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12 counters. And I'm going to divide those as nearly as possible into three equal groups. So I kind of drew it out to help us, but we can see here's a group here, here, and here. Here and it appears as though there are four in each group. So makes sense. We know that 12 divided by 3 is 4, and we know the model we're going to use works. Let's go to negative world. Negative 12 divided by 3. Well, all that's changed here is now I have a negative 12 counter. So we'll use our red to signify our negatives. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Each dot representing a negative 1. So same thing. I'm going to divide them into three equal groups. So here's a group. Here's a group. And there's a group. I have three groups. I have a negative 4 in each group. So really, all that's changed is when I had a positive 12 divided by 3, I get four positives in each. When I have a negative 12 divided by 3, I get a negative 4 in each. All right. Let's do one more to make sure that we see the full pattern. If I do a nice simple problem again, like 6 divided by 2. All right, so 6 positives again. I realize we probably know this. We should know it, and that's okay. We're just proving out the model right now. There's six positives. I'm dividing them into two even groups, so looks like I can put three in each group. I get three. Negative six divided by two is what? So, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still dividing them into two even groups, so it looks like I can just do this. Looks to me like I've got negative three in each group. So it looks like we could see a pattern. If we have a negative sign here, we just do the division problem, six divided by two, and our answer will be negative. Okay. What if we do by 15. Let's go 15. Divided by a negative 3. Now, this is a little more interesting. I'm saying I've gotten 15 positives, but I'm dividing them into negative 3 groups? That seems very strange. We've got something here we've got to answer. Well, here's what we really need to keep in mind that multiplication and division are opposites to each other. Let me back up a couple slides and just show you. 12 divided by 3 is 4. If I do 4 times 3, I get 12. Okay, again, opposites to each other. If I do negative 12 divided by 3, I get negative 4. If I do negative 4 times 3, 
I get negative 12. Since we know that on multiplication, as if there's one of them that's negative, the answer will be negative, it really doesn't matter which of these has the negative sign at that point. All right, so let's try again. Again, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. All makes sense. Negative 6 divided by 2 equals negative 3. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. We could also get to negative 6 by doing 3 times negative 2. That would be a positive 6. So really, if one of these is negative, we can just treat it as though the front one is and be okay. All right. So we know that 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that'll be a negative 5. If you see one negative sign and one positive, you know the answer is going to be negative. We do not need to worry which one the negative sign is on. Awesome. But what about this one? Hmm. A negative divided by a negative gives us, does it give us a positive? Does it give us a negative? Which one does it have to be for our math to be cons consistent? We will answer this question after we solve the question of is negative 3 times negative 5, is that positive or negative? Okay? When we answer that question, we may be able to be ready to start answering this.